All right, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to welcome you to part two of the astrology series. Um, on this one, uh, we uh, are really digging into some deep stuff, and I really need you to keep an open mind. So what I've done is I've provided a picture of me, the physical, a mental, emotional, and a spiritual plane. So that's how we have to start looking at things. When we deal with the astrology, there's three different ways we can look at a particular image or person, place, or thing. Now, I'm going to bring us back into the rotation of the Earth around the Sun. Uh, this blue ball represents the Earth at different times of the year, May, September, and January. And again, uh, if you have not watched the, my first video on astrology, um, I recommend that you go back and you'll realize what this means on a deeper level. But uh, basically what I want to go into is basically the rotation and the seasons around the, or the seasons while when the earth is in orbit. Um, we basically have solar radiation kind of striking different parts of the earth. Uh, and from a northern hemisphere perspective, from the top part of the Earth, when I say northern, up top, southern is the bottom. Well, in winter time, it's very cold because the solar radiation is striking a lower part of the, or the solar radiation is concentrated in the lower part of the Earth. And when it swings around here to the summertime, the sun radiation or solar radiation is contacting the planet at the most uppermost part of the planet and this represents the earth just still spinning on its axis as it rotates around the sun so basically during this time when we have winter um, the southern hemisphere is having its summer and vice versa conversely when we're having our summer time the southern hemisphere is cold um, so I kind of just kind of put some arrows here for our warmer seasons, which is, you know, springtime and the summer. You can see May there. And then our colder uh, times of the year, which is September through January is the winter time. Um, now, in the older charts or maps, we have something called an ecliptic. Uh, ecliptic is basically a curved path that they used to put on maps and they don't do it anymore uh, if we see the world atlas here something I want you to pay attention to is the Tropic of Cancer the Tropic of Capricorn and the Tropic or not the Tropic but the Equator okay so Tropic Tropic of Cancer uh, Equator and the Tropic of Capricorn these are going to um, become uh, well, you'll see why we need to pay attention, but uh, the ecliptic is uh, very important. Now, back to our old astrologers. Um, we have our Egyptians that paid attention to the sun, uh, noted the seasons, what it was doing. They also paid attention to the stars, the ancient astrology, astrologers. So, that's why this is why this curved path is kind of built into this chart um, this is the ecliptic now if you are a stargazer or a sun gazer sun worshiper you're gonna pay attention to what the Sun is doing so as we rotate around the earth in the seasons this this uh, the Sun is gonna have what appears to be a curved path and this curved path is what we call the ecliptic and this is the equator and as the sun goes through the seasons we're actually rotating around the sun but the sun appears to be making a movement like this like a what we would call a sine wave so again we have the sun moving up to the tropic of cancer you see why this is becoming important uh, we have the equator and we have the Tropic of Capricorn. So the Sun appears to be going up towards the Tropic of Cancer, passing through the equator, and then coming down to the Tropic of Capricorn. 
and then back up and as it spins again it goes through the cycle again and this is why we're directing our attention to the sine wave because uh, in trigonometry the sine wave is a mathematical curve and it's just pretty much a smooth repetition this would be called a cycle going up and then coming down and so the sun path kind of looks like this when we look at this ecliptic uh, if we move back the sun path here's a cycle and the ecliptic and so back to our trigonometric sine wave um, so something we just need to be aware of now the reason why we see this sun is curved path because as the earth travels around the sun um, the sun it looks as if it's moving but the earth is spinning on its axis and it's just moving around the sun so this is how we get this ecliptic or this curved path now again they do not put it on our charts anymore uh, but we know it's there now at this point so um, basically this ecliptic can be broken down into 12 different parts and we are going to get into that next part and, and we're going into part three now so we're going to show you how the zodiac is related to times of the year seasons hot cold all this and everything so let's just jump right in and we're going to talk about important times of the year. We have equinoxes, solstices, and holy days or holidays. Um, so jumping right in, important times of the year, March 21st. March 21st is related to the Japanese holy day, uh, March 21st. Um, it is the blossom season, or what they call Sakura season. Um, I didn't I didn't spell it out because I wasn't really sure of the pronounce the or the proper way to, to uh, spell it out, but it's called the Sakura season, the blossom season. All right. Um, another day. It's March twenty first, and uh, why did I do that? Oh, March twenty first, same thing. Um, but the spring equinox occurs, and you got twelve hours a day a 12 hour day night ratio so you get 12 hours of daylight 12 hours of night so equinox e equa equi means equal equi nox means night um, another thing that uh, goes on or happens during the spring equino equinox is the Jewish sacred year starts um, in addition to the Japanese uh, season Jewish sacred year starts um, and Aries happens here so in Aries uh, it's sign of the lamb or the ram and uh, the wool is the blossom alright and Jap Japanese call this the blossom season alright um, moving right along June 21st it's the longest day of the year it is the summer solstice alright so it is the longest day of the year um, anything else we need to know pretty much no but all the stuff will become important down the road September 21st uh, after this point the days become uh, shorter and colder uh, because the fall is coming and again um, the Sun is on this path so it's falling through the equator or to the lower half and we call this the fall season we're on them. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm just want to make sure we're not missing anything. Uh, September, September 21st is the first day of the Jewish secular calendar. And moving right along into December 21st. Uh, this is the shortest day of the year. Uh, Sagittarius comes into play. Um, and Let's see here, Libra, Scorpio, Sag, Cat, no, we have Cat, Pisces, this is off, but that's okay, we'll move it, my bad, alright, because 
At the lowest point of the sun, the Sagittarius, the archer is supposed to have pierced or shot. And there ought the sun bringing it to its lowest point. Um, so we will make that adjustment as we just did. So again, um, back to important times of year. Moving back, longest day of the year. Up here, life, photo, photosynthesis, growth, green, planting seeds uh, happens in this part. And at this part, it's death, cold, harsh living conditions. Um, and if you're not a, if you're not prepared here, where life and uh, uh, planting of the crops and things happen, you won't make it through the whole cold winter. So this pretty much represents death or a death period. So again, I'd like us to pay attention to this sine curve or sine wave. Going up and down, being a cycle. Um, again, we have a sine wave here. And if we shift this bottom half over, we have an upper curve and a lower curve, which basically represents a circle. It could be used to represent yin and yang, positive, negative energy. Brings us back to our zodiac circle, the sun on the cross, and there's a cross as well. And all more and more of this stuff will be apparent uh, but at this point all I want us to do is focus on the ecliptic and the movement of the Sun about the ecliptic because this ties back if we looked at video one this ties back to um, different times that the earth is rotating around the Sun in the year and how the zodiacal or zodiac sign um, becomes apparent again here in January the Sun is rising in Sagittarius here in May the Sun is rising in Aries in September uh, the Sun is not well yeah well not necessarily September but in the summertime the end of September uh, we could be in Leo and Leo um, is uh, coming down or it'd be more in Virgo so don't take these, this is just kind of rough estimate references of the months. So don't take them like they're like etched in stone. So again, back to our ecliptic, the sun, uh, the rotation of the earth around the sun is showing a curved path. But uh, again, the sun is rising in different signs. And in addition to that, uh, the curved path we see occurs if we monitor sun so the first sign or what's called to be the head is Aries the second sign is Taurus the third will be Gemini Cancer Leo Virgo Libra Scorpio Sagittarius Capricorn Aquarius and Pisces all right so I'm gonna stop it right there because I don't want to feed you too much in this particular video so let's halt right there and we will get into part four and we will get into the deeper meanings of the uh, zodiac and, and astrology thanks for watching